Hey there folks, Dan Bell with Internet here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, security within Microsoft Project Online and specifically I'm going to talk about you know, creating a situation where security is handled dynamically, visibility to projects and, so, and resources, and that is uh, by way of using security categories in the resource breakdown structure. A uh, what security categories are is basically a collection of projects, resources, and views. So the categories really determine what of those you get to see. Okay, um, this slide has you know just demonstrates or shows the default categories that are created in the system, and it provides a little bit of a description for each one. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Project Online and take a look at these items directly in the solution. Click on Server Settings. You have to have your system set up in Project Permission Mode and able to utilize any of this functionality. Project Permission Mode provides way more enhanced security uh, configuration possibilities than SharePoint Permission Mode. All right, Manage Categories. Let's click on that. And once we get in here, we'll see the categories that are within this particular demonstration environment. I'm gonna click on the My Project Security category. Note that you can create additional categories. Sometimes the need exists. Category name, My Projects, there's a description of it. First section talks about, well, if you're assigned to the security category, what projects do you get to see? Uh, first option, a radio button option is include all projects or include a selected projects. When you have the first one selected, it's pretty obvious you're going to see every project within the system. The second, you determine uh, based on either manually adding items, select them here, click an arrow, add them to the box on the right, or <clears throat> you use a combination of the checkboxes below. The current checkbox here says, well, if the user is assigned this category and they're the project owner or the status manager on assignments in the project, they'll get to see the project. All right, well, let's go look at Microsoft Project for a moment. Now, by default, if you create the project, you're owner. Uh, also, you can change the owners of projects as well, right? So that, that's pretty straightforward. What does it really mean if you're the status manager? Um, and this, what, what is, so what is a status manager situation? It's a situation where some tasks, the updates from the timesheets will go to one person, other tasks within the same project will go to somebody else. In order to use that functionality, we would go to the task usage view. And here is that view right there. You can see task, then resources in here as well. If I were to type in ST, note that there's a status manager column here. You can see that this is me. I am the status manager for these various tasks within here. Okay. If you wanted to change who the status manager was for a specific task, uh, that person would open the the project up, change who the item is or the status manager is here, then save and publish the project. So, but, but remember that person who wants to be the status manager would have to open up the project to make the change because I am logged in and I am the owner. The only person available to me is me. Okay. So that takes care of that. So again, that's the first radio button option, right? The person is the owner or status manager on assignments. The second option is the user is on that project's team. When would you use that? Well, just think of uh, the people doing the work of the project, the team members, the people um, who are going to execute you know, the work of each task. Um, what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, here's a project in my project online environment. If I navigate to my build team from enterprise dialogue, here we are, build team four, and then it's the name of the project. Uh, here are all the resources in the organization. Here are the two that are currently on the team of the project. If I wanted, for instance, let's scroll up here. Let's say we want Aaron to be able to see this project. He's a team member that's going to do work on it. I can add that person to the team, save it, and then publish it. And then immediately Aaron's going to be given access to be able to view that project simply because, right, you have the users in the project team selected checkbox. Okay. <clears throat> what about the project owner? Uh, is a st or the project owner or status manager on assignments with the project is a descendant of the user via the RBS. Well, now is when things get a little bit interesting. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up another window in my project online environment and go to the resource center. And I'm going to select myself and uh, Mr. Shackelford here. So let's let's uh, open a second one here. We'll duplicate this. All right, and I'm going to deselect these resources. So we'll go ahead and clear all, and then we're going to select myself and one other resource here. 
and there's me, and there's Daniel Shuckford. What I'm going to do is open these resources for editing in Microsoft Project. Click this open button here, right in the resources ribbon. Click open project, select yes. <clears throat> and then the resources get opened up in a resource pool as checked out enterprise resources. Therefore, any, any changes I make here when I save and close and exit, uh, those changes will be saved back to those resource records on the enterprise level. What I'm going to do is add the RBS field in here. Okay. So what this said is if the resource is a, a descendant, um, let's go back and look at that real quick. Right. So the project owner or status manager on assignments within that project is a descendant of the user. All right. So again, let's assume that I am the user. Okay. And here I am right here. So I am the user and I'm an IT and I am a director. And then let's assume that Dan Shackelford, right, is an IT. He's not a director, but he's a manager and he's the owner of the project here, right? So because Dan Shackelford is a dis direct descendant, or you know, I could take that a step further, right? <clears throat> Make him a team member. Because that person is a descendant, I'd be able to see projects that that person is the owner or status manager on. Okay. So that's what that's really talking about. And that's where that resource breakdown structure comes into play where it can provide that type of dynamic security. Let's look at the next option. A resource on the project's team is a descendant of the user via the RBS. Okay. Well, let's say that um, we'll go back here and we can use this exact example, right? I am a manager. Okay. Dan Shackelford is somebody who reports to me. Even if I don't have permission to see the project based on some other criteria within the security category, because Dan Shackelford reports to me and he's on the team of the project, I would be able to see the project that Dan's on the team of. Okay. And then lastly, the project owner or status manager on assignments within the project has the same RBS value as user. Probably pretty straightforward, but again, we're going to go ahead and take a peek at that as well. So I'm a director. Let's assume that maybe I'm a manager and then let's go back here and assume that just maybe, right, peers. Okay. So we're on the same level within the resource breakdown structure. I would be able to see that person's projects. Okay. That's the way the functionality is for visibility to projects. If you go down a little bit farther, you can see the resource section here. It's very similar in that you can include all current and future resources, or you can say only include the selected resources before uh, below based on these checkboxes, either add them manually, like I showed you before, or you select checkboxes here. So the user is the resource just basically means I can see data about myself. Uh, the users are members of the project team by a project owned by the user. Okay. So I happen to own the project. I, these people get on the team of the project by virtue of being on the team. I can see their data, the information about them. Uh, the users are descendants of the resource via the resource breakdown structure. Okay. Pretty straightforward. We already looked at the resource breakdown structure and we understand that, right? Again, going back here, if Mr. Shackelford was again, right, not a manager, but team member, that is a descendant of me. Okay. Go back here again, direct descendant via the user of the RBS, right? We know what that is now, okay? So this this is also a, not only a descendant, but a direct descendant. How do I make it um, a not direct descendant? Well, if I was on a director level, you can see that Dan Shackelford is a descendant, but not direct because manager, the manager level is between director and team member. All right. And then come back here again. And then this says they have the same RBS value as the user. So this talks to the peer section, right? So if we were to go back here, make this person a manager, um, actually I meant to make that a manager because it's more likely you're going to run into situations where they're managers and I can just go ahead and drag that down again, same level on the RBS because we are, we're peers. We set it up in the system so that we can see data about each other within the system. Okay. That is how the security categories determine visibility into projects and then resources. Okay. Pretty straightforward. The other thing the security category does, like you saw before, we mentioned in the slide, is it provides visibility to certain views. And here you can see all the views, all the project views, all the project center views, and all the other views within here. By ticking off the check boxes, that determines whether or not the user gets to see the view.
pretty straightforward. Okay, great. Well, there's your security category. Now we understand how the security categories provide visibility to projects, resources, and views. Super. Where do they get utilized? Well, let's go to security settings again. This time we're going to go to manage groups and we're going to look at the project managers security group here. <clears throat> And there is a lot of data in here, but I'm going to keep this real simple, okay? First of all, you add users to the security group. Pretty standard stuff. Then the also the other thing you do to a security group is you specify, well, what categories am I going to assign to this security group? And remember, categories define what you get to see. Okay, well, that's great. Well, how come there's multiple security categories here? Well, reason being is because watch when I select this, my org, you're going to see these items down here. Check boxes are going to be selected because when you select the category, you can select permissions as that determine what you get to do, which are these permissions down here, okay, and all the way down here. These are the what you get to do with what you get to see, which is my organization. My organization typically says I can see all projects and resources. With regard to all projects and resources, what do I get to do with all projects? Well, I get to open the project, and I get to view the project, view the project side, view the project summary. Okay, interesting. This looks like it supports a situation where I can see all projects, which is great. Okay, that's the way this organization wants to set up. However, with regard to projects that I own, which is typically what my projects is, I either own them or I'm a status manager, watch the permissions change. Notice how we have so many more permissions because when it is a project, you are the owner or the status manager, we're saying we should be able to accept task updates, add people to the team, right? Create deliverable or legacy item links, create new tasks or assignments, right? So we can do a lot more to the projects we can, we own. So this is basically, I can edit projects I own and I can see all projects, which is a very, very typical way of setting up the system. The my task is gonna be very similar to the my org, okay? And in that, in a nutshell, is how you set up the security. Those are probably the more complex uh, concepts, security concepts and building blocks to grasp within the security. However, once you do, it really, really makes a lot of sense. Now, with regard to the resource breakdown structure, you saw how the values are assigned. Where is it set? In server settings, under Enterprise Custom Fields and Lookup Tables, Resource Breakdown Structure, or RBS for short, uh, that's actually a default field. You see the RBS field here. The field references a lookup table called RBS. Lookup tables are toward the bottom. And if I click on the lookup table, and by default, when you get project online provision, this is going to be empty. There's going to be no data within the lookup table. Here you can see all the items that I put in the lookup table. Right, and you can see that they're at different levels. Very, very simple to do this. You just put all the items in and then to change the level, you use the arrows that are pointing left to right. Okay, once you get them all in there, you click save. And then at that point, you're able to open up the resource pool, like I showed you here, and then assign the RBS values. And by virtue of that, and then making the appropriate selections in the security categories, it provides that dynamic visibility versus editability I was talking to you about before, okay? All right, folks, pretty simple stuff. Hope you learned something from this. Any comments, questions, suggestions for other videos, love to hear from you. Thanks very much and have a great day.